Hi everybody, happy festive season. I'm Amy, this is my wife Maggie, Hello. and together we are Thinker Thema. And today we thought we'd record a special episode of our 10 great games that work well as stocking fillers、mm-hmm. or people pleasers、um, for the holiday season. Yeah, or great games that you can just take to any holiday gathering and are guaranteed to bring a lot of smiles and joy to the table and、uh, yeah, just some good. General、uh, good times. Yeah, and we had a few criteria for this list. So we went through our board game collection. Number one, they should be small,、uh, fairly cost effective, that you could put into a stocking、mm-hmm. or into a backpack or into your luggage when you're traveling over the holiday season、uh, to make things very easy. So they're all fairly small box、yeah. games. The second thing is they should have broad appeal. So, you know, great for gamers and for non gamers alike because over the holiday season, you always have a lot of people dropping in.、It's、If you're anything,、yeah. anything like my mum, there's always neighbors dropping in、yes. and、um, wanting to play a game. And that brings me through to my third criteria is that they should be fairly easy to teach because it's the holiday、yeah. season. There's enough going on. I mean, like, this is going to be a two hour teach. Just everyone <laughs> settle in. <laughs> Phones away. Yeah. Yeah. Quick, easy games.、Yeah. And we've also included a, quite a few that play more than four players. So, you know, most gamers' games only play up to four. So, we've tried to include some that、yeah. play more than that because usually there's a lot of people around over the holiday season. So, with all of that out of the way, let's get into the list with our first game. Okay. The first game is going to be. High society. Now, in high society, we are all trying to、uh, be part of the high society in France. And the way we're going to do that is by, well, buying luxury goods. And the way it's going to play out is every player has a、uh, stack of francs of money that you start the game with. We all start with the same amount of money. And we're going to be revealing these luxury cards one at a time. And so we're going to be bidding for. To attract those cards because they have points on them.、Mm-hmm. So, one of the key things is as, as we reveal that card, everyone gets to have a, a chance at going, oh, okay, I'll, I'll pay、uh, 15,000 francs, I'll pay only 2,000. And so, whoever obviously wins that gets to have that card. But that money is now being spent, so you don't have that money、uh, left with you. At the end of the game, as you're collecting all of these different luxury goods and you're kind of getting your great sort of、uh, display of points, you have to be very careful that you don't. Overspend because whoever has the least amount of money by the end is immediately eliminated. You cannot be part of high society if you're the person with no money, if you're broke. Yeah, and there's also these awful negative cards as well. I think、yes. they're called faux pas、yes. in the game. And when those cards come up, you are bidding to keep that card away from yes, you. Yes, you're because, paying for the scandal、yeah. to go away. Go、yeah. away. But that means that you're also in, in、um, the instance where a negative card comes up, you Are bidding money, and no matter what, you're going to lose that money unless you're the person that takes that card.、Mm-hmm. Meaning that you're looking at your hand and how much money you have left, and how much other people are bidding, and you're constantly thinking, Is this going to be the thing that tips me into being、yes. the person that has spent the most and therefore gets eliminated at the end of the game? That's where the beauty of the tension of this game is, is trying to a little bit card count, be like, oh, yeah, how go, much oh, money has m a g g i e spent? I've already. I don't think, like, I've seen their 25,000 franc <clears throat> be spent. I've seen their 20,000. I think they're going to be broke by the end. So even though they have a lot of points, they're probably not a threat. And、yeah. then there's these cards as well that act as multipliers. And so they might be times two. Or they might halve your number of、yeah. points. And it's just so interesting the way that, you know, when a times two comes up, everybody is then trying to spend a lot of money, still thinking, this might be my only opportunity to win, but if I spend too much, then I'm out of the game. It's super easy to teach.、Yeah. Everyone understands the concept of bidding,、um, and it has enough of a twist. That it gives it that like game attention. Yes. So it's just, it's just really great. Everyone we've played this with really enjoys it. And I love that this is one of those games that it's not until you start playing it that you go, oh, I see all the different things that I'm having to, to balance. And you see like that, that penny dropping on with people and going, oh, and you have those like moments of like those laughter and like the、yeah. smirkiness. So it's yeah,、really、excellent、uh, little、uh, look, game. It's like Christmas colored. Yeah. And、uh, it is tiny. So it's a really small、uh, game to pack and、yes. to. You、put into a stocking. High society. High society. Now, the next game is going to be no surprise to anyone who watches this channel or who's watched the channel、um, for a while because I am a big, big fan of the game 
taco cat goat cheese pizza. Mm -hmm. um, now this is a game which is a very light party game, but I've picked up the Christmas edition called Santa Cookie Elf Candy Snowman. And if you're not familiar with the way that the games in this series work, well, you're going to be uh, essentially chanting this saying around the table. And so everybody has a pile of cards in front of them. And uh, on their turn, they're going to turn the top card over, add it to the middle of the table and say the next word in the sequence. So as it moves around the table, it's going to be Santa, Cookie, elf, candy, snowman, Santa, cookie, elf, candy, snowman. Mm -hmm. You're continuing to say that until somebody turns a card over that matches the word that they're saying. So if I said Santa and I turned over a, a picture of Santa, everybody is going to slap in the center of the table and the person who was last to do so is going to have to take all of the cards. And that is hilarious because people's reactions can yeah. be quite slow. There's always one person who just doesn't get it to begin with. And it's so funny. Um, and this game, what I love about this series is it's so small of a game. It's great when you have a group of people who want to play something, but maybe they're not gamers. Maybe they don't know each other. Mm. And it really helps to like break the ice and get people yeah. laughing. Um, there's also these three special cards in here. As soon as I believe in this deck, there is a drum. And when a drum is played, no matter what, everybody has to hit the table and say... Rap a bum bum. Rap a bum bum. <laughs> if you're the last person to do that, again, you take the pile. Um, there's also Silent Night. When that card comes out, everyone has to say, shh. If you're the last person to do so, you take the pile. And the final one is reindeer. When this comes out, you have to put up those reindeer antlers. And if you're the last person to do so, you take the pile. If you get something wrong and you maybe you thought it was Santa, but it's actually an elf and you put your hand out there or you mm. flinch, yeah. you're taking the pile. Yeah. And so it's a hilarious game of watching everybody calling them out on, you know, getting it wrong. And it's just light, fun, silly. Yeah. Dangerous. Very dangerous. So that's the my one, uh, as a health professional, I need to give this uh, health and safety disclaimer. I always house rule it that we don't reach for the middle to do the pile thing. We just like slap, slap right in, in front, front of us. us. And it's whoever slaps last that gets the gets the, the penalty or gets the pile. Because my concern has always been the whole everyone reaching for the for the same pile and then mm. fingers doing this sort of stuff. And it was always just a hypothetical that, yes, this can happen and I don't like it, so I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> I'm going to house rule it this way until we actually met someone who had a uh, taco cat goat cheese pizza related injury and yeah when we met them they like they had the whole uh hand tapes yeah yeah so uh, yeah be it, careful and then a lot of other people came forward saying yes, yes. i also have had because an injury. you know what's not fun over the holiday season sitting in the er no. because you've broken a finger playing santa cookie elf candy snowman correct um also hard to explain to the doctor so don't do that yeah. play safely but this is a really fun little game um, what's next on the list? All right, so another one. Um, this one is another little box called Eleven Seas. So Eleven Seas, and I believe this is a, um, a reprint because I think it comes in sometimes a couple of different size boxes. They're both still um, small. In Eleven Seas, it's a bit of a different theme, which I quite like because it's all about morning tea. So we're having very sophisticated morning tea. And the way it plays out is we're going to be, um, we have this display of uh, cards. So we all start with the same um, set of cards. Um, and I believe that from 1 to 11 and so we start with this uh, grid of 4 by 2 so 8 cards are face down and we don't necessarily know which cards ended up being in that in that grid but then we have the rest of them the other the remaining three in our hands so we do know okay these are the ones that we have to, to play with ultimately what you're trying to do all these cards, some of them have um, spoons, like a spoon icon or multiple spoon icons displayed on them and at the end of the round 
whoever has the most spoons will actually win sugar cubes. And the number of sugar cubes that you win will be determined by the number of players um, for that round. So sometimes you might win two sugar cubes if you're the, the person who came first, and then you might win one if you're the second, or, but that will vary. So the way you're going to be playing it is every turn, <clears throat> every time it's your turn, you get to either swap some of the, the cards that you have on your hand with the cards that you have face down on your kind of display, or you get to play a card face up. So when you play a card face up, it has they all have a, a specific spot where they have to go. Um, and so as you're playing them face up, people are going to start, well, that, that's those are going to be the only cards that are going to count in terms of your spoons. But also people start kind of getting a bit of an idea of like, oh, okay, so Amy's already got, you know, two, three spoons um, displayed, so I better kind of catch up. The other added complication to this is that all those cards, as you play them, they have a special ability. So they might be, um, some of them are just to um, <clears throat> steal a card from another player or get another player to reveal the, the hand of cards, um, or you get to peek at all of your face down cards. So you get to then potentially later on swap some cards so you can then open up one of the ones with more spoons. And then the round will end when someone plays the 11 card, which can only be played once you have at least least four cards facing up in front of you. So that becomes the other kind of element of going, oh, they've already got four and I think they may have their 11 in their mm -hmm. hand or they might have four uh, showing, but their 11 might be still lost in their face down cards and they don't know where it is or they might have, um, yeah, that's the other thing is you can you can sort of swap cards um, around. You never really get an 11 from someone else. But anyways, that's how you play the game and it's just quite a fun experience uh, all around. Yeah, and it's called 11 season. You play the 11 because 11 is when you're meant to, you know, stop El work and have your morning tea. Yeah, 11 a.m. Yeah, yeah, 11 a.m. So um, I love this. This game is actually a very relaxing experience. And so this game is perfect if you've, you know, overindulged and you've had a big lunch or mm -hmm. something. This is one of those relaxing, now we're gonna have a cup of tea and just have kind of a quiet, but still really fun and engaging yeah, yeah. game. And again, tiny, tiny little box, um, great for travel, um, a really great experience. It plays only up to four players yeah. though, so that's something to bear in mind with this one. This was one of those that, Amy was so reluctant to play this. Like we had it, one of those games that we acquired and just, then we had it I wasn't reluctant, there. it was just, for ages. Yeah, it wasn't prioritized yeah, in the games nah, we hadn't played. Nah. And then we played it and she loved it. Yeah, we, like, I really did like, enjoy it. This is actually really fun. Yeah, yeah. really fun. That so is that's 11 Seas. Uh, the next game is a game called Parade. And again, this game plays up to six players. Um, so another good one for a group. Um, Parade is a game where you are in the world of Alice in Wonderland and there is a parade going through town and you are going to be joining this parade on your turn. You will be playing a card that has a suit and a number assigned to it down into a parade of cards that is uh, displayed in the middle of the table between all of the players. Now, there's a trick to which Wonderlandian you want to take from your hand and add to that parade because you really don't want to be attracting people to leave the parade. Now, the way that it works is um, there's going to be a long line or parade of cards and at the end, I might place down, for example, um, a blue seven. And what we do when, when I put that down is we count back along the parade seven spaces and um, we count those cards out and those cards are safe and those Wonderlandians do not want to leave the parade. But then anything after that is at risk and the card will leave the parade or the cards will leave the parade if they are the same color as the card you played or the same number or below mm. the card you played. If either of those are true, the cards come out of the parade and they go in a tableau in front of you. And you do not want this no. because in this game, the person with the least amount of points is going to win um, the game. And so when you add cards in front of you, they are going to be worth the value of that card at the end of the game. So we're trying not to attract those Wonderlandians out of the parade, but there's a little twist in that there is a majority um, of each of the suits at the end of the game. If you have the majority of that suit, they're going to get flipped over and instead of being worth the um, number of the card, so instead of like an eight and a five, um, you're gonna flip them over and now they're only worth one point. And so if you, if you 
find that all of a sudden you're collecting all these Wonderlandians of the same suit, you might as well lean in、mm. and try and get even more than the people are around you in the table. And another little twist is that at the end of the game, you're going to keep two cards aside that are hidden from your opponents that you're going to add to your scoring at the end, which may give you the majority and take、mm. it from somebody else. Yeah, so, so you don't, ne- don't necessarily know. Who is going to have the majority just by looking at you know people around the table like what their display? Because yeah, there's that secret、uh, little card. This、yeah. game is so easy to get into.、Um, it's really easy to explain. I feel like it's got one of those really nice. Learning curves, where as people start、mm. to do more of it, they're like, "Oh wait, oh yeah, no, yeah, that means、yeah. I'm going to have、bad. to take、That's、those、really、cards." Yeah, there's, card. a, there's a little moment of like you kind of go, "Wait a second, so do I want a higher card?" Yes, the higher the card, the more cards are protected. But then, no, no, because then as soon as the because that parade gets longer and longer,、mm. and so as soon as you start going, the cards are risk. You're more likely to take those. Yeah, they're going to be a lower number. Because they're going to be a lower number. So yeah, or, yeah, high cards、it's、give like, you well, safety then, and not. Yeah, but then maybe I want to play a low number because it means. That even though there's only a few that are going to be protected, then most of those numbers are going to be higher. But then anything that's the same color will also be. A so it's just it's like it's just it's simple enough, but it's just it's tricky enough. It's crunchy enough. enough. Yeah. yeah, it's a great game、there's、and really、fun. easy、ah, to get to the table.、Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just it plays up to six. It's um you know again very small, very、yep. easy to、um, travel with. Great one to throw in the backpack.、Yep. Um, that is parade. Parade. Oh, you're sending it to me. Oh, sending、you're、it to your side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next one. This one is a little bit crunchier, a bit thinkier. This one's Village Rails. It's a relatively new game. So in this game,、um, again, I love the the tagline: a game of locomotives and local motives. Because what you're doing in this game is you're going to be creating、uh, little rail、uh, networks. And so the it's very simply it's sort of like a, a multi-use card game. You have this little grid. Where you're going to be playing cards into your grid, either on a you're going to be、um, collecting and like drafting, and then playing cards that are a track side, and those track sides have a terrain type and often a couple of different、um, uh, scoring conditions. Some of them are、uh, scoring conditions based on like a set collection of things, or a variety of different types of terrains, or just they might just have a set number, um, um, victory point number on them. And so the interesting thing with this is you've got the rail track that you're creating.、Um, That scores when you end up、uh, exiting. So when it reaches from one of your starting point through to an exit point, and、yeah. that could be just one single card, or it can be a combination of cards and quite a satisfying long rail.、Mm-hmm. The other element is your trips. So throughout the game, you have the option of purchasing these trips, which are essentially the other side of the、uh, the cards, where they have a little、uh, locomotive uh, showing uh, on them, and they've got set or specific scoring. Conditions that will give you additional points if you manage to、uh, place them or kind of bank、uh, on a one of your particular areas that that track is going to be, meet that that set of conditions. So you kind of have to anticipate or plan ahead. It also has this element of. As you're、uh, drafting cards, it's got this element of you're putting. If you don't want the first card, which usually the first card with the tracks is free.、Um, if you don't want that one, you're going to be leaving coins、um, along the way until you get the one that that you want. But then it means that those cards that are left behind have coins on them, which are very important because the coins are what you're going to need in order to be able to purchase those trips for additional points. So very simple concept. But it's so thinky. It's it got is, so、yeah. many. It's fairly easy to like, you know, set up and get going. But it's got so much crunchiness in it. And again, in a really, really tiny box. Yeah, it is a lot of game in a small、mm. box, and it's one that it, it makes intuitive sense for、mm-hmm. it, like maybe someone who's newer to gaming. Because essentially, all you're doing is filling out a four by three grid. Everyone is going to be able to place all of those、mm. um, track tiles or track、yeah. cards down to. Um, to you know, take、uh, trains from one side to the other, like very, very straightforward.、Yeah. But then, if you want to challenge yourself to get those point cards and to get synergies between the types of tracks that you're making, because the tracks cross each other,、mm. like it's just a lot to think about if you want it to be more complex. So it's a great little game to have on you、um, to satisfy you know people who are more into gaming.、Yeah. So, for example, at our family Christmas,、um, we also play games. You know, with my brother. 
and sister mm -hmm. who are pretty pretty well versed yeah. in gaming because of us. So want something crunchier yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, so something a bit more challenging, um, and that is Village Rails. I'll put this one over oh, this side. That. This time. Now, we're, now we're even. All right, so now we go to your side. Yeah, so back to more of a um, beginner friendly game. Um, Silver and Gold is a great entry level roll and write. And um, in this roll and write, you are going to be looking for treasure on different islands. And the way you're going to be doing that is by drawing out different uh, polyomino Tetris style shapes onto different islands that you have in front of you. These are little islands that are essentially white, made out of whiteboard material so that you can use these reusable markers mm. and mark off the shape onto those. When you complete that um, each of the islands, they're going to give you points at the end of the game, but it also means that you get to draft a new island from the supply in the middle of the table. The way that the game works is fairly clever because there's always going to be um, the same shapes that are going to be appearing each round minus one. So we take a mystery one out of the deck, um, but we know that the probability of getting certain shapes yeah. um, becomes more and more certain as we get closer to the end um, of that deck. And the other thing that you're going to be doing is uh, trying to race for some objectives. So one thing that is uh, really important is collecting coins. So if you cover off a coin on the island, you're going to get to add it to your little coin bank. And at a certain time, you're going to be able to collect a trophy. And when you collect a trophy, if you're the first to do so or earlier to do so, you're going to get more points for doing it. Um, the other fun thing is when you cross off an X, it acts like a combo and you get to then cross off another um, square yeah, anywhere, yeah. Yeah, anywhere on your islands, which can really help you if you maybe haven't played the shapes perfectly and you've got a remaining <laughs> space left which will inevitably happen you'll end it up with a little happen. square over here a little square over there you're like oh, no. oh, oh we're phew, thank that. goodness i got yeah. that little x um or there's a um, palm tree as well. And that one's really interesting because when you cross that out, you score according to the number of palm trees mm. that are shown on the islands in the market. This game is super simple. Mm -hmm. It is really, really easy to get into. Everybody, um, gamer and non-gamer alike, understands Tetris pieces, yeah. understands crossing them off and rotating the shapes um, on these islands. But there's something just delightful about this game because it's, it's satisfying. so satisfying. Yeah. As you cross off, um, you know, one of your islands and you get to, you know, get a new island, it's just fun to challenge yourself to see how many of those islands you can get and through. Very relaxing. Like it's one of those, like, you know, you're just sort of, sort of doing your drawing yeah. sort of thing, crossing things off. And... Again, a full stomach, um, just a really relaxing <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah. Um, the, it plays only up to four, um, but also the uh, markers that come in the box are some of the best excellent yeah best um, roll and write markers that we've ever reusable markers that we've come across mm. so um, it's just a delightful game you know cheap to pick up and uh, really light to carry around or to give as a gift um, so that is silver and gold yeah nice so the next one it's a bit of a crunchier one as well so this is cat in the box so in cat in the box this is a, a trick-taking game which you know if you're not familiar with trick-taking it's all about you know what you, you usually have um, you know, a lead uh, suit and whoever ends up playing the highest value card of that suit will win unless there's often a trump suit whereas like it doesn't really matter like what you know the values that are being played if you play the trump suit then it's whoever ends up playing the higher value in the trump suit that's basic trick taking. In Cat in the Box, however, it's interesting because it's all based around uh, Schrodinger's, I can never say it correctly, Schrodinger's cat, this whole uh, concept of, you know, if if you haven't, if you have a cat in a box, you know, are they alive or are they dead? You don't really know. And it's technically both until you open the box and you have a look. And so in this, in this game, what happens is all the cards have no suit. So all their suit are potential until you actually play it and then at that point the suit gets uh, gets decided so all the cards have a black suit like a black cat and in the middle you have this uh, this little table where this is where you're going to be allocating uh, and blocking off the the suit and the number as you start playing them so the way it works is you have a little uh, kind of little card um, on on the side which is where you're going to be determining okay I'm going to be playing this so say for example if I'm the first player and I've got a three I've got a number three I'm gonna go I'm gonna lead with a three and then I'm gonna put it next to green so this is going to be a three green and then I mark that off with my little token in the central board which means now no one can play 
a green three for the rest of this whole round. Yeah, so the um, the board in the center of the table represents the deck of cards, essentially, yes. and you are marking them off by um, just re- revealing and stating yeah. what color card that is. Yes. So as we're going around and we're playing, that, that central board starts to get, you know, more, more and more crowded and a lot of spaces are going to start getting taken up. Uh, and so you will potentially get to the point where you go, uh-oh, with the cards that I have and what I would need to play, there's nothing because we there's more cards, um, more of the number of each number yes. of cards than there are available That's in that right. central yeah, only four on the board and there's board, five yeah. of each number in the deck. So if that happens where you go, uh-oh, I actually can't play a card, you cause a paradox, which is very, very bad. You do not want to do that. So when a paradox is caused, that ends the round. And now for every trick, so if you're the one who caused the paradox, every trick that you have won, which usually is one point, is now going to be negative points. As an additional uh, complication, you have this um, this ability to guess at the start of, before you start kind of playing the round, have a guess at how many tricks you're going to win for that round. And so if you do manage to hit that, then you have a bonus, um, bonus points based on the adjacencies on that central board of all your tokens kind of matching together. So your largest group of adjacent uh, tokens, which is actually a lot harder. It's than very it's, difficult yeah. to do <laughs> yeah. yeah, because <laughs> you're, cause you're trying to win tricks as well. And so you're like, oh, but if I go there, I can link up my points. Yes. But then I need to, you know, I've gambled that I'm going to win three mm. tricks. So I need to also win. So it's, it is like, a, it adds another layer. And that is what I actually really appreciate about this game is it's quite Called a quantum trick taking game. <laughs> and if you look at it, you might think this is a gamer's game. Mm-hmm. But what's really interesting is if you just take it for what it is, in that I just want to get rid of all my cards and not cause a paradox and just keep putting those tokens down where wherever as long as I can do it. Mm. It is really easy to get into. This game is fairly straightforward to explain, even if um, someone has not played a trick taking game yeah. before. I've um, taught it to um, many, many beginners Mm. and that part of it is really simple and fun but then if you're a gamer Mm. and you want to add that overlay of challenging yourself to get the gamble correct and to also get the adjacencies adjacencies. lined up then it adds this additional layer of challenge to it Um, and so that's why I think it is a great game to bring a group of people together Mm. gamers and non-gamers alike yes you know the gamers will probably win in that that situation but it's just a really nice easy game that is um, fairly relaxing to play easy to get into and it's just different it's yeah. really interesting to have a hand of cards that has no suit yeah this and- is also an excellent production so all the elements about yeah. this like the little tokens uh, the that the, the, all the the cardboard boards are kind of double layered mm-hmm. very very satisfying as well beautiful yeah. table presence and it plays up to five as well which is always great over the Christmas season yes. a lot of game in a little box it's cat in the box yeah Yes. All right. Now, the next game, it goes from slightly more complex to something so simple. Super simple. Super simple and ridiculous that it's one of those games that you could just have on the table, at the side of the table for when someone says, do you think we have time to play a game before the meal comes out? Yeah. Yes, we have time to play Crossing and I can teach you in (laughs) one minute. Um, So in this game, there is going to be mushrooms laid out on the table. And on top of each one of those mushrooms is going to be a collection of gems of different colors that will be randomly pulled out of a bag and placed on top of those mushrooms. At the same time, everybody is going to count down three, two, one, and point to one of those mushrooms if they like. If they're the only person pointing to those uh, to one of the mushrooms, they are going to get all of those gems. But if multiple people point to the same mushroom, nobody gets the gems. Yeah. Now, when you do get the gems, you get to add them to your little um, hub. You've got just this little player token and you're going to collect all of your gems on there. As the round goes on, instead of pointing to uh, one of the mushrooms, you can point to your opponent's collections of gems. Steal them. And if you're, the again, the only person pointing to those gems and they're not protecting them, you get to steal all of their gems, which is very, very mean. But if you want to protect your gems, instead of pointing to anything, you can cover your gems to bank them. Mm -hmm. And if you've covered them, nobody can steal them in that round. You also get to bank them by putting them aside for the end of the game. They're now safe. safe. 
but you have to flip over your player token, which shows that now you are out for the next round. So you can't collect any more gems for the rest of the round. Well, you're Such off a... putting your gems away. So that makes yeah. sense. You're not available this time around. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that is a little bit of a trade off because there might be a lot more gems to mm. collect that round. Um, at the end of the game, you're going to get points for each um, set of the different colors that you get, as well as additional points for leftover gems um, and the special clear gems as well. Mm. So um, it is a Super silly, simple. simple game, which shouldn't be as fun as it is. It really is. Okay, I'm known for not enjoying fun games, but this is one that is like, it's just so simple and so silly that I'm like, yeah. Like, this is fun. This is funny. Yeah. And you can play it over and over again. I've taken this game to work and it's really easy to just play game after game after game because mm. you don't really have that much attachment to your gems. But yeah. it is hilarious when, you know, someone steals things or everybody goes for the same one. And then or you think you're really clever because you've just collected all these gems, but someone's stolen all yeah. of yours. Um, and when people have to sit out the next round when because they've protected their gems, it's just super simple and yeah. easy. It's a little hard to come by so um, we debated putting this on the list but hopefully you can find a copy if that sounds like something for you this is crossing and it plays up to six players and yeah it's just a game it says 15 minutes on here but I think it's probably even quicker than that so it's just a game to play in between other games or in between meals or yeah whatever the case may be over the holiday season so that is crossing nice next game is a little game called Kite. Now, this is not a relaxing game. This is a game where you're trying to keep kites up flying and we are cooperating. So we're all going to be working together to make this happen. The kites are um, sim- symbolically uh, represented by uh, different sand timers of different colors. And so as we start flipping them, the whole idea, like the if the sand timer hasn't run out of sand or time, it means the kite is up in the air. So we have to be able to be very communicate very chaotically, but hopefully clearly enough that we actually, as we're going around the table, we're playing the cards that match, that have the the color kites on them that match a color um, sand timer that needs to be turned because otherwise it's going, it's about to run out. What 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 makes this complicated is some of the cards actually have two colors on them, and so you have to you know you're forced. You might you know we might really want the blue kite, but it turns out that mine has it's a, the, I have blue, but I also the card that I have has blue and red, and maybe the red is one that I don't want to turn, and so it's like well, maybe someone else can do it because I'm, I'm not. and so so it becomes this sort of very tense, very energizing. <laughs> we play this at like one in the morning when everyone is just so exhausted and then by the end of it everyone's so like okay I'm awake I can, I can go for another another two hour game now um, because it's just so chaotic and so stressful but also so fun and because you're all kind of playing together is that whole we all either win together or we lose together yeah because if you let any one of those sand timers run out then you lose as oh, a group yeah. um, and it's uh, <laughs> very sad especially if it happens towards the end of the game where you've kept them up in the air for so long um, but I I do really enjoy this game. You do have to be communicating the whole time, but there are some more advanced cards that Mm -hmm. you can throw in that don't just have the different colored kites on them, but also change up the game dynamic. So there's one, for example, called aeroplane mode that when you play and you have to play it the next turn, um, you'll play aeroplane mode. And then there's no talking for that round until it comes back to you. And it's just like quiet. (laughs) So if you can see that the yellow for sand time is about to run out, you're just staring at it (laughs) intently being like can someone do something about that but you can't say anything which adds more stress there's also cards like cross lines um, which force you to trade cards with the um, Mm. players next to you which you might just decide to do randomly let's just get rid of some cards but what it does is it means you take your eye off Mm -hmm. the sand timers and that always causes chaos yeah Um, and then there's another card called a storm is coming And when you get the card, you say a storm is coming. And when it comes back around to your turn, it flips all of those sand timers over, no matter where they were. Um, And I really want to talk about the very end of this game, because there is one white sand timer that you can flip throughout the game using a single colored card of any type. 
And so you're constantly looking at that kind of wild um, mm -hmm. sand timer and flipping it. But when the deck runs out, because as you play cards, you're drawing up a new card. When that deck runs out, you're almost at the end of the game. Everybody now just needs to get rid of the cards in their hand and then you've won the game. But at that point, when someone takes that last card, <laughs> you can no longer flip the white mm. kite or the white sand timer, which means you've got until that white go, 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 until go. it runs out to get rid of everybody's cards in yeah. their hand. And that is just so chaotic <laughs> and the perfect end yeah. to this chaotic, crazy, fun game. I really, really, and this came out this year. Get your hands on it if you can. Great party game. Very loud, though. So you Quite don't want to play it when, you know, it's like people have just gone to bed and, you know, it's like that's not... Not that's the, not the time to bring unless out Unless you kite. can kind of play it somewhere far away where it's fine, where you, you know, you're kind of being loud and making, making noise. Um, the other thing is it's, it's very stressful. Like it's going to get the adrenaline pumping. So probably again, not a good one right after a big meal because you'll probably <laughs> quite definitely give yourself, um, and those around you indigestion. So again, the health yeah. professional in me says, yeah, I need to warn you about that. But it is a really energizing, fun game. Yes. Um, again, you know, game night around the holiday season perfect game for that um, that is kites. kites and the final game that we have for you on this list of 10 is another new release called doodle dash now this game is interesting because it reminds me of a game that i almost put on this list again called just one mm -hmm. so side note a game called just one we had it on <laughs> another one of our um you know festive season yep. lists we've talked about it many times um but this is kind of the pictionary version mm -hmm. of that game because what you're doing in doodle dash is um you are going to be putting a card up in front of you so that everybody else can see that card aside from you as the, the as guesser, the guesser. Mm -hmm. um all the other players have a little easy and a pen, a reusable pen marker, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to draw whatever the word is that is shown. And you are going to have to try and guess that word based on their drawings. But the way that it works competitively is quite interesting. There is a cylinder um, block that sits on the middle of the table and everyone is furiously trying to draw. For example, let's just say it was a dog. Everybody's trying to draw this dog. As soon as you think that you know the guesser is going to be able to guess your dog like, based it's good on, enough it's done good, good enough, enough i've done a stick creep like stick dog and it's good enough you grab that cylinder and uh, when you grab that cylinder that means that they are going to look at your picture first and to try and guess the word dog mm -hmm. um, but what happens is everybody continues drawing until the second person decides that you know what, my dog is good enough now, I'm going to stop um, drawing as well. They put their pen and picture down and then they grab a die and they start rolling it frantically. <laughs> and everyone else gets to continue drawing until they roll the um, little symbol that means pens down, everybody Stop. stops drawing. And then what we do is in that order, so the person who grabs that cylinder uh, block first is going to simply show the guesser their picture. Mm -hmm. And if the guesser says mm, cat <laughs> and gets it wrong, <laughs> uh, we go to the next, um, the second person who drew. And then obviously, you know, if they got it right, they said, oh, I think that's dog because now they've got the combined knowledge yeah, of the like, first drawing and the second drawing. They're like, oh, okay, I get it. Sorry, I should have said dog. It's dog. Then the person drawing that second drawer and um, the guesser will get a point each. Yeah. If, you know, that fails as well, um, on the third guess, it's everybody else's pictures combined. Mm -hmm. And then everybody, aside from the first and second players, <laughs> <laughs> to um, get a point as well as the guesser. Yeah. And so that continues until you get through the whole deck of cards. You may not get through the whole deck of cards. You might decide, you know, up front, go, we only do this many cards. But and then, yeah, yeah just, like, just like Just One, it's not really so much about no. the points. It is 
just a really fun guessing game with this added race element that mm. I really, really like because yeah. it's not just drawing the best picture because I'm not the best artist. I'm nowhere oh, near the best I am artist. terrible. You are quite <laughs> terrible. Hilariously terrible. known for being very, very bad at anything like drawing related. But yeah. I like the way this works because if you are overconfident with your drawing, <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah, that's great. I'm going to do it really fast and grab and be mm. the first guess. Well, everyone else, if they want to, you can take their time and be a bit more artistic and yeah. just hope that your dodgy dog drawing yeah. is not going to be guessed correctly. Yeah. So um, that is Doodle Dash, another great one. Slightly bigger box, but, you know, it does play up to um, seven people. Mm. Um, so just another one of those great games to have around when there's a bigger group and it's yeah. just everybody knows Pictionary. It's Pictionary with a little twist. Yeah. Um, and it's slightly different to just one. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people would already have that in their collection. This one's an interesting one to look at. And that is our uh, 10 great games for um, filling stockings or for mm -hmm. taking on your festive season travels with you. Mm -hmm crowd pleasers yes i absolutely. love this list yeah. um, because i love well they're more your they skew more play like social fun interaction play. fun sort of but i still like it's still any of these games i would happily play but, at least a couple of times but tis the season to bring joy to other people yeah. and to have just these fun memorable experiences so yeah. we hope you enjoy this list and you can get some of these games to your table Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please hit like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll be back with more board game content soon. But otherwise, bye for now. Bye.